हाई डियर स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज डॉक्टर केशरी शुक्ला एंड स्टूडेंट्स इन द सीरीज ऑफ हिस्ट्री ऑफ इंग्लिश लिटरेचर टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस वन ऑफ द मोस्ट शाइनिंग लिटरेरी फिगर ऑफ इंग्लिश लिटरेचर बिलोंगिंग टू एलिजाबेथन पीरियड एंड जैकोबियन पीरियड मीन्स ही है जस्ट सर्वाइड हिज ग्लोरियस लिटरेरी लाइफ इन द रेन ऑफ क्वीन एलिजाबेथ फर्स्ट एंड इन द रेन ऑफ जेम्स फर्स्ट स्टूडेंट्स फ्रांसिस बेकन इज ए ग्रेट एसेस्ट ऑफ इंग्लिश लिटरेचर एंड नॉट ओनली द ग्रेट एसेस्ट ऑफ इंग्लिश लिटरेचर बट ही इज नोन एज द फादर ऑफ इंग्लिश एसे स्टूडेंट्स एज माउंटेन इच नोन एज द फादर ऑफ एसे तो इंप्लॉयमेंट ऑफ दिस डिवाइस ऑफ लिटरेचर एसे इन इंग्लिश लिटरेचर गोज टू फ्रांसिस बेकन वेरी ग्रेट नेम एंड ही इज नॉट ओनली ए लिटरेरी आर्टिस्ट एन एसेस्ट but he is also known for his political achievements he took so many prestigious posts in england uh, you know students that he is not uh, belonging to an uh, ordinary family he belongs to a higher class of society his father was a rich man and uh, francis bacon just uh, came in the world having a silver spoon in his mouth and uh, equally he has done for the literature in equal respects means he has a great contribution in the field of english literature he is also the founder of modern philosophy and modern sciences a special kind of philosophy away from the traditional philosophies of the world and also he has employed the foundation of modern sciences the scientific approach what he had just produced to so the modern science just developed on that that's why he is known for his modernistic philosophy and also for the foundation of modern sciences students as in earlier videos when i was just dealing with william shakespeare so i have just uh, told you some controversies about the life of william shakespeare as he was uh, christopher marlowe or Car christopher marlowe was francis bacon so some controversies uh, uh, also with francis bacon students uh, an american critic and essayist imli bacon imli bacon has given a theory baconian theory and in baconian theory she has told that uh, shakespeare like thing was not there shakespeare like personality was not there marlow like personality was not there actually uh, francis bacon was christopher marlow and francis bacon was uh, william shakespeare there was no shakespeare there was no marlow only bacon was there and in the form of uh, christopher marlow he has written excellent tragedies and in the form of uh, william shakespeare francis bacon has written excellent verses poetry and also the dramas and later on he had just uh, written so many essays in the form of francis bacon so we are not confirming that this is the fact but these kinds of controversies are there in the corridors of critics students he was born in uh, 1561 yes 3 year before william shakespeare and he died in uh, 16 26 yes 10 year after william shakespeare means his life span was broader than william shakespeare he has uh, he has given lot of employment of a new kind of a literary ethics in english literature one thing is remarkable about william shakespeare that he has given more importance to latin and given less importance to english as you know ke uh, in those days english was just uh, dominating language but in common society but the men like uh, men like uh, francis bacon who belongs to higher class of society 
अपर क्लास ऑफ सोसाइटी एरेस्टोक्रेटिक क्लास ऑफ सोसाइटी वेरी नियर टू किंग एंड एम्पायर तो दोज मैन बिलीव्ड बिकॉज ऑफ दियर सुपीरियरिटी टू शो दियर सुपीरियरिटी दे यूज स्पेशली फॉर लिटरेचर लैटिन लैंग्वेज स्टूडेंट्स ही वॉज वेरी रिच एंड ही हैज जस्ट गॉट द एजुकेशन ऑफ लॉ एंड एज ए लॉ लायर ही हैज प्रैक्टिस्ड हिज लाइफ एंड सो मेनी अचीवमेंट्स स्पेशली पोलिटिकल अचीवमेंट हायर प्रो पोस्ट इन गवर्नमेंट इन एम्पायर ही हैज जस्ट अचीव तो वी आर गोइंग टू जस्ट टेल यू दोज अचीवमेंट्स वॉट ही हैज जस्ट टेकन इन हिज लाइफ स्टूडेंट्स यू कैन नोट डाउन इट तो इन फिफ्टीन एटी फोर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल मीन्स वैन ही वॉज ओनली ट्वेंटी थ्री ईयर ऑफ एज इन एटी इन फिफ्टीन एटी फोर ही जस्ट इंटर्ड इन पार्लियामेंट in very early age in the age of 23 he just entered he became the uh, member of parliament in 1584 and uh, he had started just uh, developing the political approach his interference just came in several part of the society in the form of a member of parliament and even he had just influenced the decisions of king very dominating personality he was and and in 1603 yes students 1603 was an age when queen elizabeth's death took place and students in 1603 he got knighthood you know knighthood uh, you know uh, a kind of post and reward you know uh, this knighthood is given to those who belongs to royal class of families or special kind of achievement they have for the society those men are just rewarded with knighthood then in 1603 he achieved knighthood and 1607 very remarkable age in 1607 he became the solicitor general a very high posts in england solicitor general you can note down in 1607 he became solicitor general and in 1613 he became attorney general you know, means continuously he is just getting higher and higher achievements in his life because of his uh, tactics he has all kinds of political tactics uh, what is generally found in politicians means uh, a kind of machiavellian spirit you can say that uh, he uh, used to do everything fair and foul to get these positions but one thing is remarkable that he was dominating that's why the king was just giving all these things to him and 160 uh, 1613 as you know that he was appointed as uh, attorney general in 1617 lord keeper of great seal this is also a post lord keeper of great seal you can note down lord keeper of great seal in 1617 he has just got this position and the highest position he had achieved in 1618 and it was the post of lord chancellor yes students this is a this is a post of just highest magistrate like post in england means the legal system was under him and 1618 very remarkable age you know as i have told you lord chancellor as a lord chancellor he has started working and his last achievement just uh, took place in 1621 when he was uh, just given the viscount of uh, albanies the viscount of albanies in 1621 students here i want to add that this was the final year of his political height means actually when he was a lord chancellor to so from that very time he was under the suspicion he was under the clouds of corruption as you know that uh, he was corrupt one and uh, the charges which were made on him of a uh, corruption of bribing which were proved and he has to leave his all posts in 1621 means remaining 5 year he just lived in england as a disgraced person all his post was snatched from him and this is the reason that alexander pope had said about him as you know that the brightest wisest but the meanest of mankind very remarkable line uh, just uh, told by uh, alexander pope a man of neo classical age as i have told you he has told about francis bacon that he was brightest wisest 
but the meanest of mankind. Its major reason was this, as I have told you, that his achievement in political area, in politics, in governance, very nice. He has a nice achievement in literary field. He has nice achievement in common social field, in public life. The in the matter of achievements, he was a great one, brightest, wisest, most wise. You know, the kind of concepts he has given in his essays and philosophic writings written in philo written in Latin language. You can understand his greatness. That's why Alexander Pope has said that he is the brightest and wisest, but the meanest of mankind. Meanest of mankind means for the mankind, what kind of practices he had just performed in his life. Means he has taken bribe, he has followed certain paths of, all the paths of rather we can say, all the paths of corruption. He has, uh, on what post he was there, that he has done corruption. As a, you know, as a Lord Chancellor, he was suspected in several kinds of fault, several kinds of uh, corruptions he was found. And in the end, all the corruption charges were proved true. And he was made out from all the posts. So on this behalf, Alexander Pope said that he is meanest of mankind. Although in political field, although in literary field, although in his philosophies, he is the man of uh, highest intellect, highest knowledge, highest practical wisdom, all the things he had. But the remarkable thing that for the common being, bribing, corruption and uh, all kinds of foul ways what he has followed during his highest posts when he was on that. So for that he is called the meanest of mankind. The students, these are the things what I have told you about this very great man. One thing I want to add here that uh, for proving his supremacy, actually he was belonging to the highest class of society. That's why he has always considered English language inferior to Latin language. That's why he has written most of his creations with his certain interests in Latin language. His philosophic works, his other essay works, what he has written. So all those are in Latin language. Because he knew, he used to say that common English language is not a, a standard language. And this is a dishonor for us to just write in English language. But ironically, this is the fact that the kind of achievement, the kind of popularity, because of what we are just remembering Francis Bacon, so this is not Latin, but because of English. He has written his creations, especially essays in English. Only essays he has written in, in English. Why you know? He used to say that my essays are councils. Another name of his essays is council. He used to say that these are not essays. These are the councils. Councils means a kind of advice for the common men. So on the basis of his personal experiences about the society and life, he wanted to suggest certain things to the common men. And you know that the language of common men was English. The language of common men was not Latin. It was the Latin language for the higher class of society. And he wanted to suggest common men. He wanted to just counsel and advise the common men. That's why for these suggestions, he has used English language and he has told these essays as counsels. Students, more than 50 
almost 58 essays he has written and most of the essays are started with of like of travel of studies of simulation and dissimulation of married and single life these kinds of essays he has written all most of the essays are started with of word so by this you can just guess that this is the essay of francis bacon first uh, three volumes in three volumes his essays were published in the first volume 10 essays only 10 essays were published and it was the year 1597 in 1597 the first volume of his essays was published uh, you can note down the year uh, yes 1597 only 10 essays and in 1612 he has published 38 essays in second volume few sonnets were repeated repeatedly just uh, there few essays were repeated in this volume 38 sonnets were there and the final volume came in 1625 this was the year of his you know this was the year uh, one year before his death and in this year he has published 58 essays students these are the three volumes what he had just published and all his essays are based on practical wisdom and the knowledge of uh, impersonal life he is not uh, subjective in his approach so all these things important things i have just suggested you about uh, uh, william uh, about francis bacon dear students now here i want to just add the prose style of bacon means as an essayist what qualities he has so as an essayist including his prose style i am just going to deal with the first important thing the first important quality of francis bacon's style of his essays as an essayist as i want to just discuss the first important quality that first of all i want to tell you what is style style means uh, just manner of uh, presenting your thought the manner of presentation of theme in what way some person just uh, tells in direct way some in indirect way some uses first person some uses second person uh, some uses uh, you know that objective style some subjective style so these are the things these are the styles means way of presentation of your theme and thoughts that is called a style the, what are the style especially what are the thoughts William Shakespeare has employed in his essays so I am just going to tell you the first important quality that uh, the first sentence of Bacon's essay you can just note down one by one the first statement of Francis Bacon's all essays is always striking uh, remaining is all the sentences of Francis Bacon's essays are striking but uh, he don't make any kind of background for the essay. Since the beginning, in the very first sentence, he just press the readers to think. Means he create a kind of interest in the readers, even from the first sentence, so that they are compelled to just read the further part of the essay. As you have just studied in off place, if you have studied off place, the first sentence of of place man is man in high places are thrice just thrice servants man is high places man in high places are thrice servants now the people will be just compelled to think if if a man is on high post the how he can be servant he has already so many servants being on high post something is special in it definitely so readers are compelled to think and uh, i want to just add here another uh, example as you have studied of studies revenge oh, sorry uh, of revenge in of revenge he has written revenge is a kind of wild justice the very first sentence of this essay revenge is a kind of wild justice so my dear students uh, this is also a very striking sentence uh, with very first sentence you will just find that this is really very striking sentence and uh, another important quality use of terse 
यूज ऑफ टर्स और इपिग्रामेटिक स्टाइल यू नो और एफरिस्टिक स्टाइल यू नो तो वट इज टर्स लेट मी टेल यू टर्स मीन्स ए ए लॉन्ग लॉन्ग मैटर इन शॉर्ट दैट इज कॉल्ड टर्स यू हैव स्टडीड एज अबाउट बिहारी बिहारी ने गागर में सागर भर दिया है तो दीज काइंड ऑफ थॉट्स when someone just employs in his writings that is called use of terms epigrammatic style you know epigrammatic means a, a kind of a, a language device in which it is employed that lengthy kind of thoughts a long kinds of so many kinds of heavy thoughts is just given in short sentences so this is epigrammatic style and aphoristic style is also very same aphoristic style means when someone offers so many thoughts in short sentences with the touch of some humor with the touch of some pleaser means uh, so many thoughts are in a single sentence and also during the study of those sentences you will feel a uh, some kind of just you know some kind of pleaser uh, some kind of just you can say a humorous approach you will find there so these kinds of sentences bacon has used and the very important aphoristic style or epigrammatic style or the use of terse students here i want to just add a, a quotation here just he has taken from off great place in off great place he has written it is a strange desire it is you can note down it is a strange desire to seek power it is a strange desire to seek power and lose liberty very striking sentence this is students in a short he has told a lot that every man in the world want to have more and more power and you know that when you achieve more and more power you lose your liberty students as you know that uh, uh, cricketers are there Uh, politicians are there they have ample power but they need bodyguards means they feel insecure they are, uh, they cannot just uh, enjoy uh, pani puri on road so these kinds of uh, things are there practical things he has employed always in his essays and this is called his aphoristic style or epigrammatic style or the use of uh, terse very important another quality proverbial quality use of proverbs and maxims what is proverb and maxim proverbs and maxim means when a kind of sentence or uh, or the part of sentence which needs a special kind of explanation some some morality is behind it some some universal values are there some universal truth like things are there so they are called proverb and and that is always true in several circumstances तो बेकन्स एसेज आर नोन फॉर इज प्रोवर्बियल क्वालिटी द सेंटेंसेज आर प्रोवर्ब्स एंड मैक्सिम्स यू कैन जस्ट यूज हिज सेंटेंसेस ऑफ हिज एसेज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ मैक्सिम्स दैट यू कॉल कहावत मुहावरे तो एज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ जस्ट प्रोवर्ब्स यू कैन जस्ट कोट देम टू जस्टिफाई योर विजन्स द विजन्स वॉट यू आर जस्ट प्रेजेंटिंग बिफोर सम to to justify that you can use the short sentence the short fragment of sentence given by william uh, given by francis bacon and that is the proverb as you have studied uh, so many examples in uh, of death he has written man fear death as children fear to go in dark although means he has told that although men used to say that i don't fear death but this is the fact that every man is in the impression of uh, fear of death this is as true as a child just fear of a just a dark so these kinds of sentences he has just given in his uh, aphoristic style and also in his proverbial quality his sentences are proverbs means fact what he has given another very important quality that he has avoided conjunctions and other grammatical devices the commas he has just avoided and this create a kind of obscurity in his essays sometimes he just forget to write conjunction without conjunction he adds sentences and words and sometimes uh, this create a kind of obscurity and difficulty to understand his meaning this is also uh, the important feature of his essays is he writing and this is also the part of his uh, essay writing style use of simile another quality of his style is use of simile metaphors and quotations 
he is fond of uh, similes he is fond of uh, metaphors he is fond of so many quotations just taken from other where you can just take the example and factual example all rising to great place this is also from his essay of great place students all rising to great place is by a winding chair you can note down very very important and significant line he has written very practical line also in this he has told and this is the impression of his personal life although he has taken the one thing is remarkable here dear students bacon has just written all the things based on his personal experiences but he has never employed himself in his essays he has never used the word i and we like things so here i am just giving you the example from of great place all rising to great place is by a winding chair he is told that anyone who achieved greatness or you want to achieve greatness so you have to follow some certain uh, just a foul ways you have to follow uh, this is not necessary that you achieve greatness and success highest posts only on the basis of fair ways you can just use the foul ways also the very important thing what he has just used in the form of simile he has used uh, and uh, metaphors he has used and quotations he has used so in this regard you can just give you uh, just uh, the example of it and also this is called the practical wisdom what is important for the development of the society according to him yes students objectivity is another very important quality of his essays in his style he is always objective means objective means he has never employed himself in his essays like charles lamb charles lamb has employed means the subject matter of his personal life he has employed means charles lamb has employed that's why he is called subjective but francis bacon is known for his objective approach although the experience of the society uh, bacon has just gathered and all that has been just given in his essays but he has never employed himself in his essays means his essays are not personal but impersonal he is always impersonal in his essays that is called his objective style this is also very important thing about his essays and another important thing that he has used antithesis you know antithesis is a kind of figure of speech means two opposite meaning words are just employed there where that is called antithesis opposite words and this is the major quality of bacon's essays that he has that he has always used so many sentences with opposite meaning so words especially the words of opposite meanings uh, you can just take the example of uh, um, just travel about the travel uh, you know he has written a very excellent essay of travel you know that of travel has a great touch of renisha the in of travel he has written travel in the younger sort means for young men he has suggested you that travel in the younger sort is the part of education and for elder a part of experience means for the younger one for the young age it for the children it is the matter of subject means for the traveling you can just study Uh, the education you can get knowledge and for the uh, elder ones this is the matter of uh, you know this is the matter of experience they experience it the students these kinds of sentences were younger and older elder these are the opposite words in these ways he has written the use of antithesis in his essays and you know that a study of uh, st uh, another very important example Uh, another important example is also there in one of the most important feature of his style the pair construction the pair construction is another very important quality pair construction means he used to just write sentences in two or three pairs means two sentences or three sentences are just added in one that is called pair construction that he has used so you can just take the example from of his studies very important line a study serves for delight for ornament and ability three three things uh, studies are for delight first 
for ornament second and for ability third so these kinds of construction where where three meaningful uh, sentences or three meaningful words are given in single sentence so that is also important quality of francis bacon's essays one thing i want to just add here my dear students bacon's obscurity as i have told you that bacon sometimes become difficult as i have told you that he has just used uh, uh, latin language and you know that latin is not the common language for common men as we are just studying if we are studying the essays of francis bacon the only we are acquainted about english language and he has used french language uh, italian language and even german language most of the words he has taken also from latin language but other language words he has just employed in his english essays but we like people you like people are generally acquainted about the english language only the employment of quotations also from other words the employment of quotations employment of uh, uh, other language words makes him obscure difficult sometimes uh, as i have told you that he just uh, forget to use uh, uh, even uh, conjunctions so that also makes uh, difficult and this creates uh, bacon's obscurity my dear students now the another important quality that bacon's theme very important thing that bacon's theme is always man and man's life the life of common man whatever is important for the man and whatever is important for the life of common man that has always been the subject matter of uh, francis bacon's essays so dear students all these things i have just suggested you about uh, francis bacon i hope you have just got well and one thing i want to add here that bacon is always in the impression of uh, renesha he has employed the renaissance touch in his essays so in the next video i will just add the renaissance touch in his essays i think this video is going to long that's why i'm just uh, uh, finishing my this lecture on francis bacon uh, better for you to wait for the next video thank you dear students thank you very much